Hello YouTube, and welcome to the start of something new. It's going to be called the NBA News, and for the time being it's going to be called the NBA Draft News, just to stay up with the times, and then so it shows up when you look up NBA Draft, you know? Anyways, for everyone who doesn't want to hear me talk about my channel, just I'll have a time scamp, and, or you could just skip ahead to the time where I'm showing articles on the screen and that's when I'll start with the video for everyone who's like subscribed to my channel this is going to be my first just ongoing series that I'll have on the channel pretty much every three days or so maybe every other day we'll see how well this does anyways I think this will be what defines my channel and this will be what my channel does as a whole is just post these every other day because I can't really come up with mock drafts for every other day. And this is, That's just like a little project thing I'm working on just for the time being. And we can do it again and again. But this is something that we can really do twice or three times every week. And let's just talk about the news that we see on the internet. And just summarize it and put it all down here. Just in case you missed it. Anyways, I really hope you've been enjoying the videos. I hope... A lot of people love the news and, you know, I just want to watch more NBA news because, you know, it's kind of hard to find sometimes if you're not paying attention and looking up articles all day. So I'll just do that for you. So today's is going to be the RJ Hampton edition because there is a lot of stuff on RJ Hampton and his stock and his potential shooting. Let me out of this, please. <laughs> okay. So the first one, probably going to be the first website I always go to, is HoopsRumors.com. For October 1st, we have the RJ Hampton shooting improvement. He wasn't a very good shooter, and that's something I've been talking about in the mock draft. That's why I have him dropping all the way to 24 in my mock draft. or Actually, I believe 26 to the, Celt to the Celtics. And mainly just because he wasn't a great shooter, and then the rest of his attributes weren't that great either. But apparently he's been working with uh, Mike Miller from Memphis. Well, he was working at Memphis this year. And then this. I think he's been working a lot on his jump shot. Working with Mike Miller has certainly help his jump shot. So, yeah, I think RJ Hampton will be seeing some shooting improvements. And it seems to be a, a noticeable, substantial improvement. So we also see here that Theo Malden is talking with nine NBA teams, which is pretty interesting considering how I feel like his draft stock is dropping, which I think we'll see that later in the video too. And I, I'm i kind of surprised that there's that many teams. And the Knicks are looking at him, who have pick eight. But I don't think they would ever take Malden with pick eight. So I don't know really why they would be talking to Malden anyways. And then we're going to be talking about the NBA draft combine. Uh, this... And these next articles will be in the next video. I'll be going through all the articles I missed in September. And I'll just go week by week through them. And I'll post them later. Anyways, uh, I'll actually crop real quick. Because I think there will be a bit of ads. Um, so, I'll be looking at Bleacher Report. Talking about Stockwatch. They're saying Poku. Alex, yeah, you get the point. Poku. The power forward from Greece is his stock is going up stock going down is anthony edwards i mean no one's really surprised there's a, he, there's a lot to be worried about him his drive and enthusiasm for winning and yeah the golden state warriors aren't interested in him at number two stock up rj hampton once again talking about the shooting over here we have cbs risers and fallers they're talking about poku rising yeah, another Poku rising, because, yeah, I mean, he's worth risk. Maxi rising. I can't really say that uh, that Maxi should be rising, but they're comparing him to Tyler Hero. And <laughs> I guess that's, that's something you can do, considering they're both coming out of Kentucky. They're freshman guards. And they, I, I don't believe that Tyler Hero had an insane season over there at Kentucky before he got drafted, so... Yeah, so if if Kentucky fans are as high on Maxi as they were on Tyler Hero, you know, maybe you should believe them because Hero has definitely worked out for the Heat. Precious Achiwa also 
improving stock, and then we're talking about Isaiah Joe, how he just started committing to the draft, so his stock's rising. Tyrell Terry, I think the next video will have a lot of stuff about him. I'm not too sure yet, but everyone's talking about his stock is trending up like crazy. The Omaldon stock is going down. Another one saying that, well, no, I was saying is going down. It's not another article, but I would agree. Yeah, his stock is going down. It's just, he doesn't have great doesn't have great attributes and not everyone's convinced of how good of a player he is. Josh Green, I mean, just the main fact that he can't shoot, uh, can't shoot as well as other wing prospects. So we'll see where he ends up. His stock was dropping. Uh, I don't know when this article is re released, but these are the top prospects skipping the combine. Yeah, got Onyeka Kungwu, probably the most interesting no, probably Tyrese Halliburton would be the most interesting player to see, just because of how you would measure up. Uh, I'd really be interested to see how he's done over the, the the quarantine period and what he's done over that break. Well, I mean, Onyeka Kongwu, we do really want to see his wingspan, because that'll be an interesting statistic for his case. Devin Vassell, Patrick Williams, I feel like Patrick Williams probably needed to go to the Combine, but... I guess they made the decision not to. Same thing with Cole Anthony. I think, I mean, Patrick Williams' stock is trending up, which I don't agree with, but, you know, I guess that's a thing that's happening. And then Cole Anthony, we know he's kind of trending down recently. So I think he might have needed to attend it unless he just has some injury concern. He really doesn't want teams to know about it. I don't know. I, I don't know what the case is, why he's not going. Obi Toppin, Tyrese Maxey, Aaron Nesmith. Aaron Nesmith could have tested really well if he went. So I'm wondering why he didn't. And then Sadiq Bey. And then we have some players, some player stuff. We're going to Denny of Dia. And Denny of Dia is talking about how he hasn't really spoken from any NB to NBA team. So that's pretty interesting because, I mean, a lot of teams should be interested in him. He's going to be like the number four pick probably. Especially considering this is the uh, this is a Bulls article right here, and they're talking about drafting Denny of Dia before. Anyways, uh, another interesting thing is he's just talking about how he doesn't want to be co compared to Luka Doncic, which he absolutely in no case should be, just because he's a good playmaker and similar height. He's nowhere near the level of talent that Luka Doncic was at coming into the NBA, and also he's just built differently than Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic is, you know, he's not nearly as athletic as Denny of Dia. His offensive game is a lot more substantial. Denny of Dia has a lot more potential as a defender compared to Doncic. I mean, Doncic will be a good team defender. I mean, if he has the same coach for a while, he'll just be incorporated into the defense and he won't really make many mistakes. And that's just good enough. But Denny of Dia has the potential to become a good defender. It's just Denny of Dia is a lot more raw of a player as than than Luka Doncic was coming out of the draft because Luka Doncic was already substantiated as a really really good player in the NBA as soon as he came out of the draft. Next up is Desmond Bain to the Sixers. How they're saying the Sixers have shown a lot of interest in him. At number twenty one, I feel like Desmond Bain could go a bit earlier, especially if the Mavericks come on to that pick. Without Devin Vassell, Sadiq Bey, Aaron Nesmith, and Jemias Ramsey on the board. I think if those four players are off the board, or if they just like Desmond Bain better than him, uh, better than Jemias Ramsey, then they're probably going to take Desmond Bain at 18. But if they don't take him at 18, he's easily going to drop to the Philadelphia 76ers. And it sounds like the Sixers really want this guy. And then Bain is also talking to the sick, uh, to the Suns, which doesn't make sense, and the Bucks, which, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I believe I actually mocked him there in my latest mock draft. So, actually, no, I said to the Nuggets, but he probably would have gone to the Bucks otherwise. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of teams will be interested in this guy just because he's a well-put-together player, and he's he has good height at 6'6", compared to a bunch of these other later-round guards. And then finally, we have R.J. Hampton. He's been he said he interviewed with eight teams ahead of the draft. He's talked to the Bulls, Knicks, Wizards, Pistons, Suns, Kings, Blazers, and Thunder. 
I'm just saying the most interesting team on here is the Blazers. <laughs> Why are they talking about him? I mean, they have they have four elite, uh, they have four very good guards right now on the team, and Lillard, McCollum, Simons, and Trent Jr. I, I don't see a reason why they would ever need RJ Hampton. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And Kings, come on. De'Aaron, Buddy Heald, Boyan, uh, sorry, Bogdan Bogdanovich. And they're paying a lot of money for Corey Joseph not to really play much. So <laughs> that's interesting. Thunder, I don't know what they're doing. They just want to add another 6'5 point guard, apparently. Or shooting guard. We'll see. Anyways, yep. Yeah, yeah. Also, a bunch of those teams are probably selecting too high to pick him. So, I think it's a bit interesting to see those teams talking to him. I feel like I've seen the Suns talk to just about everyone. Anyway, I think that's about it for the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And we will start having the September reviews up. And I'll probably get two of them done today and then two of them done tomorrow with the second round selections. So, yeah, tune in to see those. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Bye.